hello and welcome to the lecture so let's continue with the one more event category that is on the dynamic action which is the custom event so here it is so let's create a custom event and before that what's a custom event so a custom event is something you know it's our own definition of an event where you want to trigger the dynamic action the action part alone it is not a specific to like a listening thing or suppose for an element it's just our own definition of your own logic that we want to execute that action so let's say if you want a action that is you know uh, maybe this action which we have this part yeah so this opens the model dialog right and this needs to be you know a common action not only we have two buttons here that is open model that opens the dialog and as well as we have the test model that opens the dialog so we are copying this uh, logic everywhere and we of course can define a function and we can call that but to a more specific way where we want to have a thing that we want to pass a data specifically that something needs to be added to this logic in that case we would be using as a apex dot event dot trigger we will have to customize our event and that will be triggered whenever we wanted to so this is happening on click right so we can have our own definition that should be triggered when something of this logic had happened and that's our own definition to execute that so that is the thing so we will try to you know add one event of our own let's say we'll add like when user is you know trying to edit this we will try to open the model dialog in our case that's a specific thing we can add so in our case right so let's define our own custom event which i had said earlier we have a row initialization that activates this you know this initialize so it's like you know drop user trying to edit here we will be open the model dialog it's just a specific case i'm just mentioning so let's see that first we'll define our custom event and i'll create a dynamic action and we'll just add you know custom event and here we'll select the custom and this is very important this is where we have to give the our event name like we'll have change or click or lot of even names right here we have to you know give our logic here that's the thing so we will have open model we are going to open the model dialog this can be anything that's your own name and this is also very important we are going to listen through the entire document because a custom event can have a lot of uh, you know thing throughout the page it's not specific to a particular button or a thing throughout the page it can happen at any time if i click this i can open do something if i click this i can do the same thing so in that way it's the definition there so we will give some you know the most selector type that is the complete page is just the document and now we'll create our true action and let's say we will create a true action and that would be a javascript code maybe we'll try to you know put console.log this dot data also we'll add one more action that we can understand through the alert that is one more action that is through execute yeah this alert we will try to alert the user in some way like you know custom event called so we will test this in the console first and then we'll implement in our practical way in our uh, components so we'll go to the console and to trigger this event we have a api from the apex javascript that is apex dot event dot trigger this will open me you know a document that is the first one which is the selector we have mentioned if you can see this document the selector should be mentioned and then our name so let me copy this the name we have defined the event name so i'm just gonna use it with the quotes that's very important it's this string 
and now if i try to enter it you can see that we are getting that alert as well as one action this dot i mean we are putting this dot data and it's returning me undefined so why is it why there is no data i can use it so this is not something i can use no we have to pass it one more parameter to that apex dot event dot trigger so that third parameter will be like an object and that will be considered as a this dot data that is what we want to see so let's say this is an object that is you know maybe key that will be having maybe a value one in that case so this is our thing so now if you can see that we are getting yeah one more alert is overridden so this is the this dot data if you can see maybe the it's not loaded here so it's loading me that this dot data here before it is undefined if we put that this dot data and now it is coming as the value which you are passing as the third parameter the key and it is printing me so now we can make use of the this dot data even in our custom event that's why it's more custom we can pass our own data to that dynamic action and also we can define whatever the actions we want so let's say this alert right so so this apex dot event dot trigger is happening through this even you can trigger it when you are clicking this button you can show that uh, thing it's not specific to click off that button even it can be anything it, if you are changing this also we can trigger it's just a global thing it's not with specific to a specific event right so that's the main purpose of this custom event event that's can be added as an event lesser in javascript right so this is about that now we will have a more practical you know so let's say i'll copy this uh, part where you're opening the model dialog which we have used in the ajax callback section and even in the model dialog section if you want you can go through that and that will be explained this logic so i'm just gonna paste this here so this would do and i will create one more event that is on the row initialization so when you are initializing this would be enabled on like we saw in the previous one and that would call this so let's create that event that is the row initialization and that would be on our interactive grid so i have deleted that the previous one that's uh, just a demo so now we'll create for our own way and that is row initialization and that's region and the stores grid and yeah so we have gonna you know this is passed right so we are gonna copy our console thing and we are gonna use this as our row initialization javascript so this javascript here we'll paste it and we're gonna trigger that whenever we are gonna about to edit that cell that's uh, you know some case where we want if I'm gonna edit this, I'm gonna show this dialog. Like some case, if you are double clicking, basically, if you are a forms user, you might be aware of this. If you are double clicking and you want to show something, that in that case, it is about that. So this custom event will be useful in that case. So this is all about that. Even if uh, you can remember that this store data for this event. If you can see we would be getting our own in a customized way right so if i can get this as a custom event thing if i go to the console and i would add a row and this would give me some key for the parameters which we saw that is about the model uh, object and the record so i can make use of this in my ajax you know this ajax callback right this i can pass it i can pass this thing to my ajax callback so here it will be receiving this right this stored data so i can add it to my ajax callback and i can pass that thing as well so if i wanna you know pass that id specifically so this id right so we are gonna edit this id so that would be this dot data dot 
and this will be record id right so we don't have any for the new row so if it is a new row we won't open the dialog if it is only a existing row we will try to open that even we can handle that in other case with the meta object that is with the row initialization but now we'll focus on this logic so we'll just write it this dot data dot record we have so this printing key right so we have to put the key dot record id and we'll write a if statement if this dot data so basically you know that's a uh, printing t thousand though so this is not a number right so we'll check for with a specific number function that is is not a number that would check me if this is not a number then then go that no we have to take the opposite false case not function and this would go to this if this is a number means if this is not a number and the false of that means if this is a number then only we will try to execute our you know the ajax callback so that's the thing so let me format this so this is what we want for our practical case and let me refresh it and we yeah, will delete this alert just for a test it was written so let me refresh again and we will try to you know edit our row now so it's passing me the one it's not passing me the one which is selected and if i try to edit this it's trying to pass me this as well so in our case it's very useful in this way and also if we try to add nothing happens because that won't call that logic so this is the thing so if i try to edit seattle it will pass me the seattle and if i try to edit new delhi it will pass me that new delhi so this is very useful now for our adding with other events as a you know that whatever we pass through that key that can be used it to other events and that will be you know use it our own logic so that's the thing so we are combining those two events functionality here and this is what the custom event is and even there are lots of useful cases where you can rely on and so that's it about the dynamic actions on the custom event side and we are left with the browser events and that's very simple and we'll see more about that and even the facts about dynamic actions in the next lecture